I got goals to chase, I got roads to pay. Not yet where I wanna be, but I got close today. I went ghost today, I got least to say. I be focused on these dreams like I didn't sleep today. Y'all can be so amazed, y'all ain't seen nothing. Fraudsters and bad apples. Listen, full disclosure, when Relics first opened its doors and when Gary, Paul, and, and my brother Eugene and I decided we're going to do this, we didn't really know the industry well enough to have the foresight to look out for fraudsters or bad apples. And full disclosure, we got hit multiple times yeah. in different ways. Uh, we were doing deals with people in the States that never shipped the right product that we were never able to recoup the cost for. Uh, you know, we had people try to, uh, to purchase from us with, with fake currency or fake cards or, or you know, uh, fake credit cards. Uh, and even to this day, you know, unfortunately, you hear break-ins, you hear stores getting robbed, you hear of people trying to sell fake slabs, uh, you hear of people uh, doing breaks out of their basements that aren't fulfilling the obligations of that break or a giveaway, whatever the case is. Anywhere where money is involved, mm -hmm. criminal elements or bad apples naturally enter. It's just society has existed this way for hundreds and hundreds of years. Sports cards are very unique in the sense that they're highly liquid, but not highly protected, uh, as is your bank vault or anything else, like diamonds and jewelry, right? Like sports cards could be the equivalent value of a Rolex watch, you know, and, and the way that people sort of handle that, <laughs> literally, the way that people handle that sport card is very different from the way people would handle a, a Rolex watch. So I think as a hobby shop, we have to be very, very careful and we've gotten a lot more careful and, and you know, we're, we're well trained in ensuring that we protect ourselves from these things. But a lot more importantly, the hobbyist and the consumer mm -hmm. has to be way more careful. And that's why I say, you know, the, tr the trust that a hobby shop brings to the industry, I think is only gonna get more important. Yeah. like. Lots of deals are done on Facebook Marketplace, eBay, and, and, and look, most of the hobby is good, right? Like yeah. most of the hobby is good. The people are great. The community is great. Everything is great. And then you got the bad apples, right? So uh, creating that safe place where trust, you know, a trusted community of, of people that come together that can work out deals is, is awesome, right? Um, comes back to Web 3.0 as well. Yeah. How do you take away? And, and yeah. And I feel like part of that is on us as like being a shop where, you know, we, we have that opportunity to, to kind of provide again, that, going back to that safe spot and a place where, you know, trust is built and someone can come in here comfortably and not have to worry about buying a fake slab or getting ripped off, sort totally. of say. Even, listen, even if something as simple or, you know, you could say as, as silly as some people believe, for example, if we look at a very specific product, absolute football blasters. Some people believe that if you weigh an absolute football blaster, you can actually tell if it has a hit in it. Or, uh, or you know, because the, the, the vast majority of blasters weigh X grams and, and the, the hit blasters weigh Y grams. And, and a lot of people will put out these social media posts and say that this is happening and et cetera. So if you're out there as a consumer and you're buying an absolute blaster, how do you know that it's never been weighed, right? You don't. So really and truly, something as simple as that, simple as simple as like buying a $50 or $60 blaster box, where do you source that box? Ultimately comes down to trust. So then, and, you know, to David's point, if you're a hobby shop, if you're an LCS, you're in this for the long run. You're in this for the long haul. It's very, very important to us to establish trust with our clients yeah. and establish trust to the community. And, you know, uh, I'll pat our own back. I think we've done an incredible job of that. You know, go read our Google reviews and, and, and you'll see sort of the way we treat uh, the Relic Squad and our customers. So, you know, the future of the hobby won't completely eliminate this. But I think as more and more people converge to going to trusted sources, it, it'll definitely help eliminate the bad app. And we as a team meet and we, we, we talked about this, right? There's so much drama and negativity sometimes in the hobby and sometimes comes in waves, right? Like. Uh, what you have to do is kind of know about it, be aware of it, and put your head down and move forward. Yeah. And have fun, right? Protect yourself from it. But, you know, like positive vibes only, right? Like if a deal is too good to be true, walk away from it, right? Like, like don't get yourself in yeah. that. And walk that's how we got caught it. for the, yeah. in the early days, right? We, we, we were 
trying to grasp at amazing deals and, and we learned the hard way that, you know, when something's too good to be true, it usually is. Walk away. Got Positive vibes only. Yeah. Positive it's vibes good vibe. only. The t-shirt is good vibes only, I believe. Good vibes? Good vibes. Buy it. Yeah, that's the t-shirt. Hashtag Relic Squad. Uh, good, vibes good vibes only. Thanks for watching, guys. Um, 3235 Young Street. Follow us at Relics. We appreciate, love all the support. Um, and we're going to keep pushing out new content for you guys. Thank you.